All right. So, uh, I've done some stuff for the game. As you can see, there's extra stuff, extra uh, assets laying around. So I'm just gonna explain what's going on here. Um, if you recognize what these look like, they are made with the help of a fantastic library called DRM GUI, which is being hosted on the GitHub. You can just clone it and use it for yourself if you're having trouble writing DOI stuff. Uh, so the first thing I've done, which is pretty cool, is to profile the game. I want to know actually how fast the game is running, um, which portion of the game was running slow. And this profile is in a hierarchy, which means each operation contains more operations with their own information, and each operation of those, you know, contain even their own operations. They can be infinitely nested if there's enough RAM on your computer. Probably not. And you can see, I can, I can see clearly why it's taking so long to start up. You know, all these things doesn't, doesn't matter. I just, well, obviously, I have to optimize the asset loading in the game, and I can, I can see why each frame is taking so long to render. Well, it's not really taking that long, but yeah, I need to do some uh, optimization for shader plumbing because obviously it shouldn't take that long, or I'm just missing something. Okay, so that's the profiler. There is also memory profiler, which is, isn't as fancy. It's just um, you can click on each memory arena that's being used by the game and see how much usage is taken up. It, they're not changing because there is no dynamic uh, dynamic uh, allocation going on in the game except uh, transient arena. There is steadily, uh, I mean, when you when you do the transition thing, there is a little bit jump, uh, one kilobyte jump in there because that was for storing an extra skeleton for. Uh, smooth interpolating between different animation clips. And going on to the world editor, we have, uh, well, I have different editing schemes which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, this is a depression angle setting for our camera that's tracking the player. If you slide it, it changes the value inside the camera and, and uh, changes the depression angle. You can get different shots from different angles with this thing pretty easily. So that I can you can also zoom in. Now it's like a like a Zelda game now. Like new Zelda game. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Go back. Or I can add it with text and do a top down view which isn't very helpful because his hat is um, occluding everything. Alright, let's go back. And there's more stuff to it. There's a, like a freely moving camera, and I'm looking at a totally different uh, direction. And when I press the key again, you can see the. Well, that's not obvious. I look that way. You can see the camera smoothly um, interpolates. It doesn't. It doesn't snaps onto you immediately. It, it, it had, there is a little uh, nice transition because I'm using quaternion. I'm doing blur between quaternions. That's pretty cool. You can also select entities inside the game and edit their states. I can move the tree around. I can change the position, scale, orientation. And I can destroy stuff. It's gone now. I can destroy the crap room. Well, the reason I call it crap room because you can... Okay, let's raise it a little bit. You can see there's, on the edges, there's actually no polygon connecting them. And you can see through them pretty easily. This is my first artwork, so don't judge. Um, this can be gone because it's ugly. And you can, you can see that there is more uh, attribute on player because you know, the player is more important than everything else. It's more important than this dog, maybe. And you can edit the speed and stuff. Well, this is just a demonstration of just how much that you can do with edit the uh, game stuff with these editors. It's pretty powerful. You can delete the player, but when you delete it, there's no way to move around in the game anymore because, you know, it's like a rebindable. The way I've set it up is that it's like a rebindable state. Every time 
the procedure looks for an entity that has the name of player, then it um, does all the updating for that entity as if it's the player. And when it can't find an entity with an entity with the name of player, it just doesn't do anything. It can still go to a free uh, free roaming camera, but it won't do any good. Yeah, that's just all the stuff I've done. You can scale this dog up if you want. Wait, this is the sloppy ground. Here's the dog. Here's a gigantic dog. Pretty cool. Alright, that's it.